Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I teach philosophy here at NYU Program of Liberal Studies, and I am very happy to be with you, with you um, on this uh, mini course about how to write a paper. The first uh, video that we've been uh, sharing is why. Why are we writing a paper? The second one is what. What is that we want to share? Uh, the argument of the paper. The third one is who. Who is our audience? The fourth one is when, which are our sources? Where are we locating our paper in, for instance, the history of philosophy or the history of biology? And now we are going to a very important topic, which is where. Is we're talking about the architecture of your paper. Um, this is fundamental. There is no paper that is going to be an A that doesn't have a good and clear structure. So how do we get to a clear structure? We're going to go uh, step by step into having a very clear structure for your papers. The first thing that you want to think is uh, uh, the first page. The first page, you need a very good title. We've been addressing this. And the introduction. The introduction can be either one or two paragraphs. Think of this as one page. It's one, either one or two paragraphs. In the introduction, you generally don't want any quotes. You want to have already your argument in your introduction, and you want to already, already share your uh, sources. So for instance, in my case, I teach philosophy. If you are uh, addressing the topic of technology in the 21st century, and you are uh, having your argument supported by, let's say, um, Donna Haraway, um, Martin Heidegger, and Nietzsche, you would have already these three sources in the introduction. Why? Because the people who are going to read you uh, may as well decide to read you or not based on what is your tradition. There are so many different traditions within the history of philosophy. And so people are uh, looking for specific answers. So it is very important to give uh, the location of your paper in the history of whatever is your discipline. So to summarize, the introduction is fundamental. Some people, I would say most people, are only going to read your title, your introduction, and your conclusions. If you do not have a good introduction, you are going to lose your audience. So you want to make sure that your intro introduction is very clear, very welcoming. And yes, you could think you, your, of your introduction as kind of like an abstract. It, traditionally, they should not be exactly the same. The abstract should be a little different. But in general, you could say that your introduction and your abstract are pretty much very, very similar. So to summarize, the introduction is fundamental. You need to have your argument. You need to have your sources there. It doesn't, cannot be very long. You want to catch your audience. You don't want to go into any quotes yet. Quotes are very important, especially in academic writing, but they are going to come in the second part, which is about developing your argument. And we're going to go one uh, here in a second. So to summarize, no quotes in the introduction. Uh, make sure to have your argument there and make sure that you locate your argument within the history that you're going to be bringing along in your paper. The second part that it is uh, very important is the development of the argument. We are talking here about papers. Let's think of a paper that is uh, 2,500 to 3,000 words. Let's think of something like, let's say, six pages or eight pages. So you would have the first page, just introduction. The second page is going to be the second, maybe the second, the, the second and the third page are going to be the development of your subtopic one. So for instance, if you are talking about, let's say, Nietzsche in this uh, paper, you're going to have Nietzsche as, for instance, uh, supporting your subtopic, uh, part of your argument that, that is, you know, one of the legs of your table to really support your argument. Uh, from the first paragraph, the first topic uh, that you're going to be addressing, that we can think of one to two pages, you're going to go to the second part. Make sure that these two parts are connected. Make sure that once you pass from the topic number one to number two, there is no surprise. It's not a jump. It is a harmonious development from one to two. Think of a song. I also want to say that in general, this is not a rule, you know, like uh, tattooed on the stone, but you want to, in general, make sure that, for instance, if you're talking about Nietzsche, and let's say you're talking about the overhuman, 
Make sure to talk about that in, a, in, a, in, in let's say, in paragraph one, in a subtopic one, one and two pages, for instance. Let's try to have it there. Don't have a little bit of niche here, there, and there, and there, and then. Try not to have confusion. Try to have a very clear structure. You don't want your audience to get lost in your paper. You don't want to create a maze, and you do not want to create a labyrinth. Labyrinths are beautiful. My second book that actually is coming out exactly today, uh, it is conceived as a labyrinth. It's called The Art of Being Posthuman, if you want to read it. But that's a book that was intentionally conceived as a labyrinth. Now, if your papers, if you're writing a paper, especially, for instance, as an undergraduate, do not confuse your audience. Be very clear, be very strategic about this. OK? So from paragraph subtopic one, you're going to harmoniously go into paragraph two. Think of a song that there is a, a good refrain, and then there is a pause, and then you go the song. Keep going to the second phase. Second phase, another clear topic. Now, for instance, we're talking about, um, let's say, Heidegger, who really loved Nietzsche. And with all that, we can talk about Heidegger. It is an important, he's an important thinker in the history of philosophy of technology. So if our paper is about technology, we're talking about Heidegger, boom, here we go. Second part about Heidegger, connecting to Nietzsche. Maybe you know the first part can be that, that Heidegger studied Nietzsche. You need a connection there. Uh, Heidegger, let's say one to two pages. And then from there, you connect to the last part of your development. Let's say that you're talking about Donna Haraway, the cyborg. Again, one to two pages for this. Now, the development is where you want your quotes. The quotes are fundamental in any academic paper. And we did talk about the quotes in our pre previous video number four. But make sure that your quotes are not in the introduction or in the conclusion. Again, this is not a rule, you know, like uh, tattooed in stone, but you want to think in general that you don't, you don't want to lose your audience with long quotes in the introduction or in the conclusions. The introduction should be a summary of the paper, and the conclusion we're going to talk about in a second should be that you show how successful you were to prove your argument. So one more time, the quotes should be paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, Possibly, if you're talking, for instance, about Nietzsche, keep it to paragraph one. If you're talking about Heidegger, keep it to paragraph two. If you're talking about Haraway, keep it to paragraph three. OK? And then the, from here, we go to the conclusions. Now, uh, I've been teaching here for uh, 10 years, and I read uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of papers. The conclusions is something that people, especially at the beginning of their career, do not take, in, do not take seriously, but they should. Because most of your audience, is only going to be reading your title, your introduction, and your conclusion. And this is true for any type of writing. It can be a, 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 a book, can be a paper, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, not your professor. Your professor is going to read the whole thing. But you don't want to, to waste such an important moment. The conclusion is almost like you go to a restaurant, and, uh, and everything is so delicious, and you're so happy. And then here comes the dessert, and the dessert is really not good, it's, it's, it's all, it doesn't taste good. What is the last flavor that you're going to keep in your mouth? Is that. You're not going to remember, you're not going to have a good memory of the paper because the conclusions were not good. So the conclusions are really important. Take some time just to work on your conclusions. So what are the conclusions? The conclusions are not the repetition of the introduction. The introduction is the welcoming. It's almost like the menu. You go to a restaurant, there's the menu. They tell you exactly what is going to be there for you to be, for instance, eating there. The conclusion is when you show that you were successful at proving your argument. How, what was your argument and why does that work? So here you show your success. And then I want to say something that is uh, definitely very true for, uh, uh, for this stage of writing, undergraduate papers. It may be something that you want to challenge if you're writing a book or if you're really advancing in your writing, maybe graduate, postgraduate. But at this stage, I don't want personally any surprises in the conclusions. So for instance, I give you this example. All right, someone is writing this paper about technology. Uh, for instance, in, uh, in um, uh, we're talking about in Nietzsche, we're going to talk about Heidegger, we talk about uh, uh, Haraway. And then the last uh, sentence, is a quote by incredible Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, who I really deeply love, uh, that says, who says something about technology. And, and that's how the conclusion, how the, the, the paper ends. Now, that can be something you can think of when you're more refining your writing. But at this stage, 
The question that comes to the reader is, why if Thich Nhat Hanh, for instance, is so important in the history of philosophy of technology, why this person didn't talk about Thich Nhat Hanh throughout the paper? You almost live like this. It's almost like you go to a restaurant and you go to pay and, uh, and they say, oh, did you eat this food? And you say, yes. And they say, so sorry, you didn't uh, eat this other plate, this other dish. This dish was so delicious. And you feel like, wow, I mean, you thought you really liked what you ate, but now you feel like, oh, but, you know, this is what I should have been cho choosing. So what I want to say is that this is something you can play with uh, in some creative ways, maybe when you're more advanced in your writing. But at this stage, and the same for my student, for most undergraduate students, try not to surprise the reader at the very end. Try to have the reader feel it satisfied. You gave them a lot. 2,500 to 3,000 words are six to eight pages. It's going to take them at least 45 minutes of their time to read that. Don't make them feel uh, bad, like, oh, wow, you know, like I read, I spent all this time to read this paper, but I really should have read this other author. This is not the stage. This is not where you want to do it. You could do it if you write a book, for instance, and, you know, the transition from, let's say, chapter one to chapter two could be exactly that. Then you bring on Thich Nhat Hanh and say, okay, and now we're going to explore uh, technology through, for instance, the Zen tradition uh, of Buddhism and through Thich Nhat Hanh, and boom, you go to chapter two, and that's what you found. So the, the, the reader feel accompanied in this journey, but not for a short paper. So to summarize, this uh, part, the architecture of your paper is fundamental to get a good grade. It's fundamental to clarify your own mind. It's fundamental for the readers to keep going and read your paper. So you want to have a clear structure. You want to have a good title, an introduction, the development, and the conclusion. I would like to thank you so much for your attention. And from here, we're going to go to the last uh, of this mini course on how to write a paper with the great question, how to write a paper. Thank you so much and see you soon.